In this tutorial, I will show you how to create keyframe animations for props in Unity. The first thing we want to do is create an object that we will animate. So I'll start by creating a sphere. And to make it easier to see what we're doing with the sphere, I'm going to add a texture to it with stripes. Now to create an animation, uh, it's helpful to create a folder to keep all of your animations together. So I'll create an animations folder. And inside that animations folder, I will right click and create a new animation. And I'm going to make first a sort of bouncing animation for the sphere. Once you've created uh, an animation, you want to decide if this animation should loop or not. And you can always come back to edit that later. If you select your animation in your folder, you can check or uncheck this box later. Now to attach this bounce animation to my sphere, you can take this animation and drag it down in the bottom area where it says add component, drag right below that and let go and it will create an animator component. So we use the animation object and create an animator component. And this is the animator component here that we created. The animator component basically tells the object which animation it should play. Now we're going to go to the animation window, not to be confused with the animator window. The animator window actually just shows which animations are being played, but we actually want to edit the animations. So we'll go to the animation window and we'll select our sphere so we know which animation we're editing. And now we can add property here. And you can animate any property that the sphere has. So all objects in Unity have a transform. So we'll start there. And I'm going to have a uh, position animation. So I'll move the sphere up and down. So I'll hit the plus here. And here we can see the keyframes on our timeline. And if you click and drag along the numbered line, you are scrubbing along the timeline. And this lets you see what the object looks like at each frame of its animation. So if we drag this red line to the center, we're going to add a new keyframe here. And I'm going to drag on the up arrow. I'm going to drag my sphere up. And we can see it created a new keyframe for us here. And now if I drag along the timeline, you can see what each frame of the animation looks like. You can also preview the animation by hitting the play button. And if you want to edit the curves of your animation, that's on the curves sheet with this tab down at the bottom. And if you press F, it will center on whichever keyframe you have selected. And if you click off of your keyframes and press F, it will center the entire animation in your window. And you can edit how you want the curves of the animation to behave. And hit play to preview that animation. So even though it has the same keyframes, by changing the curves, you can drastically change the behavior of the animation. And if you want to be able to edit the sides of this tangent independently, you can right click on the keyframe and select broken. And now I can edit each side independently. You can also select flat and it will flatten it back to uh, a flat tangent. So I'm going to go back to broken and I'm going to have it come to a point at the top. And you can also adjust this keyframe from this view as well. So I'm adjusting this keyframe so that the value it's storing is higher. And so now you can see it hits up at a sharp 
acceleration and back down immediately. Alternatively, you could set this back to flat and adjust the end keyframe curves. so that it, it sort of appears to be bouncing. You can see how it hits at a sharp point at the bottom. Now let's make another object with a new animation. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, once you have animated the position of something, uh, it will always go back to that position where you animated. So if I hit play and view this animation, and then if I tried to move this object somewhere else in my scene, so I want it to be animated over here, but as soon as I hit play, it snaps it back to the center where I animated it at. So if you want to be able to move an object that you are going to have a position animation for, you want to actually create a parent game object that does not have an animation. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is remove my animator component and I'm going to delete my bounce animation and my sphere uh, animator controller. And I'm going to start by creating an empty game object first. So I'm going to create an empty game object. And I want to position this empty game object exactly where my sphere is. So to do that, I'm going to drag my game object onto my sphere so that it's a child. And zero my x, y, and z values so that object is directly in the center of my sphere. Now I'll drag it down to unparent it. And I'm going to rename this as Sphere Container. And I'll take my sphere and drag it onto the Sphere Container. So now the Sphere Container is the parent. Now I will create a new animation, just as I did before. And the second time you create an animation, it's always faster and easier because you know what you're trying to do. And I will drag this down under the Add Component section on the sphere. And we can see it has created our animator controller. And then in the win window animation, I'll add property for my position under Transform. If you ever can't see the plus next to it, sometimes you will have to scroll from this scroll bar down here to see the plus icon. So if you ever can't see them, you might just have to use the scroll bar. So I've added my position as a property and I'm going to scrub along the timeline to the halfway point to the 30 and I will drag this up and it automatically creates a keyframe. And then I'm going to edit my curves and if you press F, it will focus your, uh, your curves in the center. And I'm going to click on the green one to make sure that I have the green keyframe selected. And I'm going to adjust my curves so that it comes to a point at the bottom. And then hit play. And make sure that you select your animation and check the box for loop time so that your animation will loop. Now we can see the animation is working where we animated it. And don't move the, the sphere object, but if you select the sphere container, you can now move this off to the side and the animation will not be affected by that move it will be in the position where you wanted to move the object.
Now I'm going to add another object to my scene. I'm going to add a cylinder. And this is going to be a coin, so I'm going to have a spinning animation for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust it so that we can see it, what it is from the camera's point of view. And I'm going to add a new animation. So I'll create animation and I'm going to call this spin. And just as before, I'll select my object that I'm going to animate, drag my animation right below add component and it creates an animator component. Now under the animation window, this time I'm going to add a property for rotation. If you're not animating the position, you don't have to worry about creating the parent object. So for a spin animation, what I'm actually going to do is go to the very last keyframe, drag my timeline all the way to the end and select the last keyframe. And if you click on this little triangle, you can adjust the rotations of your object. So if I set my Y rotation to 360 or let's do 359 for the last frame and for the very first frame I'm going to set my Y rotation to 0 now when I scrub along the timeline, I can see what that animation looks like. And if I hit play, I can see a preview. And you can see how it speeds up and slows down. It eases in and out of the animation. I want that to spin continuously. So I'm going to go to my curves sheet and press F to center it. And I want this keyframe to actually come to a straight line at the top. And same with my bottom keyframe. I want this to be a straight line. It's almost continuous, but not quite. So let's try to get this line a little bit straighter. And get this line a little straighter. And now let's see. That looks pretty good. And I'll close out of the animation window and be sure to select your spin animation and check the box for loop time. You can also animate the color of this object and you can even do it in the same animation. So if you go back to the animation window and add another property, under mesh render, you can scroll down to color and scroll this bottom scroll all the way to the right so we can hit the plus button. And what I'm going to do is halfway in the center, I'm going to adjust the color and I want this to turn yellow. So that would be uh, zero for the blue and one and one for green and red. Or we could drop this down a little bit and do 0.8 and 0.8 so it's a little bit less bright. And now you can see how that transition goes through the animation. There may be times when you also want to animate the alpha for the object. So back in the animation window, we can see the alpha is an option on here, but if we set the alpha somewhere in our animation to zero creates a keyframe for us but we can see that it's never actually changing the alpha of the object 
In order to see the alpha change on the object, we need to make a change to the material property. So let's, uh, in order to do that, we actually need to create a new material for this object. So I'm going to go to the materials folder and create a new material called coin. And I'm going to drag this onto my coin object. And now this coin material, in order to see transparency, we need to change this from opaque to fade. And this will allow us to see the transparency change on that object. So now if we go back to our animation window, if we scrub along the timeline, we can see the coin disappears right around where we have the alpha keyframe set. So now let's see that in action. This same animation method can be used to animate lights in your scene as well. I'm going to create a plane for the ground. And I'm going to animate the direction light so that we can see how animating lights affects the scene. So I'm going to create one more animation called lighting and attach this to my direction light. And then in my animation window, I'll add a property and we can animate any of the properties of the light. For example, we can animate the color of the light. Maybe I want the color to get darker as if it's becoming more towards evening. So now that's what the lighting will do on the animation. And we might also want to animate the orientation of the light. Generally, as towards the evening time, the direction of the light changes. So that's why the shadows get longer. So I'm going to add a rotation. And right here in the middle, I'm going to take and drag the rotation of that. And you can actually see that since this is the main direction light, adjusting the rotation is actually adjusting the appearance of the skybox. The skybox is linked to this main direction light. And that's a little bit too fast for a day-night cycle. So if you ever want to adjust the positions of your keyframes, if you select the top diamond, that actually selects all of the keyframes that are below that diamond. So I'm going to drag this out and then I'll also drag the middle one out. And now we can see how that timing changes. And now let's see all of our animations together. You can also see that the shadow for the transparent object fades out as the transparency fades out, which is a built-in effect in Unity's shadows. These types of keyframe animations can be applied to any properties on any objects you have in your scene. So whenever you're working with something that you want to be able to change the properties, you can just create an animation to change those properties. And now you know how to create keyframe animations in Unity.